Hey guys, I'm Steven. I'm the application engineer based out of Orlando, and today we're going to be going over XStudio. XStudio is a fantastic online application that's going to allow us to create these photorealistic renderings using our product files. So what's so great about this is not only are we going to be able to generate that marketing content, but as we're designing, we're going to be able to approve of the form and the color palette that we're selecting for our designs and we're going to have a better sense of if we're going in the right design direction or not okay so let's say one day i log into my 3d experience platform and i see on one of my dashboards that we've been coming up with some new designs for some of the components of our circular saw all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump right here into x studio and i'm going to start off a new project so these x studio projects are going to be called experiences as soon as I hit that new button, I'm gonna go through my part browser or my product browser where I can see all the collaborative spaces that I have access to. And then I can see, for example, my circular saw is a file that I can bring into my X Studio. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this open. All right, so now I got my circular saw experience started. I can go ahead and start setting this up. All right, and to set this up, I need to understand the user interface here because nicely done, the way everything is set up is kind of the way that you would move through your workflow. It's, so it's very intuitive to get used to. All right, so on the left hand side, you can see that we have our scene palette. So if I wanted to create multiple views and angles of my renderings at once, I can go ahead and do so here, but we'll stick to one. All right, so now I get sort of a feature tree for this experience. Here on this leftmost tab, I have my feature tree for the actual geometry and all the product files that are included. I have a feature tree for all the materials that I've been applied. And then for the actual sort of the top level uh, experience feature tree level is gonna be up here, okay? So of course we got our viewport area and looking at the bottom here is going to be our main toolbar. The first four buttons are going to be things like seeing that initial splash screen that we saw earlier, saving, renaming this file, or reloading this from the database, so it's sort of database-esque tools, if you will. But now we kind of move into really sort of the XStudio tools. So this is going to be to insert things such as ambiance, products, insert material, and import XML file. You might have some 3D files that you want to also bring into here in addition to the base file that you started off with. So you can do so through this tool, all right? So the ambiance, and this next button here is to create an ambiance, is going to be for the environments and the environmental lighting. So this is a good place to start with your renderings because this kind of helps you accurately decide on whether you like the direction you're moving in or not. Okay, so the environment is important because these are the colors and the lighting that's going to be reflecting and refracting off of your model, really creating that realistic look. So the one that comes might be a little bit flat with the package here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly browse into this folder and then I'm going to see that I have this nice studio HDR that I can apply. You can find these HDRs from anywhere on the internet whether they're free or paid for. And it's really easy to save them and then bring them into here, okay? So you can see a nice preview of what I got over here on the right-hand side. So what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to put in a plate, right? So I might not want to actually have this background showing behind my product file. I might want it to be just this flat image here. But what I'm actually gonna go ahead and do is use this white background so that I could use this for some PowerPoints or Word documents that I might be moving this around to, okay? So now I can hit next. I could adjust the exposure. I can adjust how bright my environment's going to be. And if I want this to be at a certain rotation, I can go ahead and adjust that with this slider as well, okay? And you can see how that lighting's going to change depending on the angle of our environment or our ambiance. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call this my studio ambiance. And I'm gonna hit create. Okay, so if I have a library of these, that insert ambiance tool is gonna to allow me to select whichever one that has been uh, created. All right, 
So now that I have that ambiance loaded, what I can start to do is apply some materials and appearances to my geometry. Now a good question I get asked quite frequently is, if I've applied these appearances inside of the CAD tool, do I need to reapply them inside of the rendering tool? And the answer is yes. The reason is because inside of the CAD tool, the appearances and materials really prioritize performance. So it's not gonna have quite as much information embedded as it probably should for a photorealistic image, all right? Things like metals and wood materials, I, I really notice a difference when you move those into a rendering program. They don't look quite right, so it is important to reapply them inside of the rendering tool. So with that insert material dialog selected, I can now access my library full of materials that I might want to use. So it now becomes very easy for me to just pre-select one of my objects here, and then I can just click and drag. Let me do this candy apple red, and I'll bring that right into my tool here. All right, and just for fun, let me go ahead and apply that to this left-hand side here. So you can see that the material properties are now controllable with all of these sliders, right? All this information isn't really built into CAD level materials. This is really things that are important for rendering, all right? So I brought in a certain type of material. It had those properties selectable. I might want to apply black spray paint, right? Let me go ahead and pre-select this component right here. Black spray paint, and you can see that its appearance will slightly alter, okay? But that's really as easy as it is to apply these materials. Of course, you can create a more elaborate or a more specific library to fit your needs. But for something like this, I think the stock's gonna do very good. So maybe something like this saw blade here, I might not like how that metal is showing up. So this steel gray, I think is gonna fit very well. Just clicking and dragging that in is going to make it look a lot better. Now. If you're familiar with SOLIDWORKS Visualize, to kind of compare this viewport's mode, it's kind of like preview, a little bit better, but it's really to just show you in a quicker manner, efficient manner, what this is going to kind of look like, right? But what if I wanted to kind of implement the ray tracing that's going to make this look a lot more photorealistic? Well, I actually got this nice button down here, which is going to be called Live Preview Rendering. And this is going to show me in a little window what this is going to look like with that ray tracing applied. All right, so you can see what it looks like and it looks pretty good, but there are some more materials that I wanna go ahead and reassign. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, so now that I put a little bit more work into the materials, I can see that my life preview is looking very good. I am closer to rendering this thing out. However, the last step here is to figure out how we want this camera to take this actual render, what angle, what camera properties, all that good stuff. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this, get out of my materials library here. So I'm gonna go ahead and position it the way that I want it to be usable, right? So I think this looks good here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and at the top right, I have this button here to apply this camera to the view scene. So you can see when I click this button, at the left-hand side, that scene, is going to update to reflect this positioning. All right, so that looks great. So the next thing I need to do is adjust some of the camera properties, and there's some very important ones to really make it look a lot better, all right? So the first one is going to be the focal length. Now, focal length of 60 is, you know, if you see uh, kind of like a, like a perspective view of a product that's kind of blown up a little bit in the middle and looks further uh, back on the sides, that's going to be a focal length of 60. All right, so a lot of people will do that for product marketing material. However, if you were to look at something with your eyes, we're looking more at a focal length of about 100 millimeters. All right, so if you set that, you might need to zoom in and out to kind of fix up that positioning. But that is a very important thing to keep in mind of any range between 60 and 100 is gonna be perfectly fine. It's gonna be up to how much perspective distortion you want in your final image here, all right? Scrolling down a little bit more in the camera properties, notice how we have a 3D sequence option here. So if I wanted to create a turntable style animation, I could do so through this 360 sequence tool, but we won't be doing that for now. 
The focus point is also something that is very important. All right. So if your eyes focus on something in space, everything that's far behind it or far in front of it, it's going to look blurry to you. Okay. So that is what this focus tool is going to be emulating. So what I might do is pick a focus. I'm going to go ahead and select this part of my geometry right here because I want that to be in focus. And then the blur, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a defaults for now. All right. And the format, of course, you can change the aspect ratio of your image if you want it to be portrait or landscape. Any of these ratios can be set here. If you need it to be set one to one because you're putting it on social media, for example, you can set that here. OK, but really the focal length and the focus are very important for your rendering to come out looking more realistic and not overly um, synthetic or perfect. Focus is a great way to kind of create that photographic look. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide the camera properties. I am pretty much all set. I'm actually gonna adjust this just a little bit more. That looks good. All right, I like that positioning on the left. So now I got two more buttons here. This is really just to manipulate your viewport here. All right, so I'm gonna select this button to do the render export here. So if I wanted to do that 3D 360 sequence, I could do so through here, but I'm gonna leave it as that still image PNG format. I can adjust its resolution, all right? And what I can do is set the quality. So I might set it to ultra, and I'm gonna go ahead and render this out. So now that this is rendering, what I can do is use my computer for any other task. It's not using my computer's local resources to create this rendering. I have this tool down here for me to see my job monitor for my renders. You can see I've made a couple before, but I got my circular saw here processing now at the bottom. All right. So when this is done, we'll go ahead and take a look at it. All right, we are now done allowing it to render. There's a couple different ways we can do this, but what I'm gonna do is download this directly to my computer because I might need to use this content for something else, like different PowerPoints and Word documents. But taking a look at it, it looks fantastic. If I needed to make any other adjustments to the materials or the camera positioning or the camera properties, I could do so. But I think this looks very good. All right, so what I can do now is I can go into my community dashboard and I can add in a post. All right, I can put in our new image here and we can now share this content with the rest of our team. So using XStudio, a very simple, straightforward tool to use to create fantastic looking renders on the browser, which is really, really cool. But yeah, folks, thanks for joining us today and taking a look at X Studio. As always, if you need any help with any of these tools, feel free to contact us at trimec.com. Thanks guys.